Hello everyone, here is another video for OrgTube channel. In this video, I'm going to explain acetoacetic ester synthesis. Here is a structure for acetoacetic ester. In acetoacetic ester, this alpha carbon between two carbonyl groups has two acidic hydrogen. We can easily remove this hydrogen by using sodium ethoxide and make an anion for this compound. This anion can be used in SN2 reaction. So if we perform reaction between an alkyl halide, this alkyl halide should be primary or it should be CH3X. This negative carbon can attack and expelling the leaving group then it produces alkyl acetoacetic ester. By hydrolysis of this ester under acidic condition and high temperature, this ester group should convert to the carboxylic acid, but like malonic ester synthesis, it's leaving a structure as a carbon dioxide. So I'm going to write this generic equation here one time. But this compound is not stable under this hydrolysis condition. This carbon dioxide leaves a structure and we eventually have an acetone with an alkyl group on alpha carbon. So this method is for synthesis of methyl ketone or acetone derivatives. Let's have some examples for this reaction. Here is the first reaction. The first step, sodium ethoxide cause formation of anion then second step when we add this alkyl halide negative expelling bromine so we would have this allyl group on alpha carbon and then for third step when we hydrolysis the product this ester group leave our structure so our final product is an acetone and on alpha carbon of acetone, we have this alkyl. We have two acidic hydrogen in acetoacetic ester. So instead of putting one alkyl group, we can repeat this process two times. Let's have an example when we put two alkyl group on alpha carbon. Here is a second example. In this example, as you can see, we use the base two times in a step one and in a step three. And we use two different alkyl halide in a step two. And in step four. So we don't need to write all steps when we want to write the answer. We can take a look to the first two steps. The result for this step is SN2 reaction, and this methyl group should go to the alpha carbon. So I derive the structure for acetoacetic ester, then I put a CH3 here. By performing a step three and a step four, we have the same process again, the second hydrogen removed by base and then this alkyl halide isobutyl it will attach to the alpha carbon as well so i take bromine and attach this group to the alpha carbon so we have one two three so one two three and the last step is hydrolysis when we perform hydrolysis the whole ester group is leaving the structure it converts to carboxylic acid then carbon dioxide so I can simply erase this part then I would like to rewrite the structure so we have this acetone and then on alpha carbon of acetone we have isobutyl group and we also have methyl group this is our answer so all we should do is we should take a look to this part of the ketone and then on alpha carbon we need to put our alkyl group Let's see some synthesis question for this reaction. Here is the first example for synthesis. We would like to synthesize this ketone by using acetoacetic ester. For answering this type of question, we should know that only this piece of acetoacetic ester remaining in the product. So by taking a look to this part, we can see that this alkyl group that I mark it with blue attaches to the acetoacetic ester so i need to have this structure and a living group so i can easily perform sn2 reaction 
So if I use a base sodium ethoxide, then this acetoacetic ester converts to anion. Then by reaction of anion and this alkyl halide, we have this product. And then by hydrolysis of this product, this part of molecule leaves the structure and the remaining part is an acetone and that alkyl group with blue color. So by using these three steps, we can easily synthesize this product. Here is the next example. We would like to synthesize this ketone. Again, we should take a look to the acetone in this structure. And we can see that there are two groups on alpha carbon of acetone or alpha carbon of acetoacetic ester. So I should use benzyl bromide and I also need to use this alkyl halide in this reaction. So to find in this alkyl halide, we just take a look to the structure and instead of attachment to the alpha carbon, we put a leaving group. So first and second step is using a base like sodium ethoxide and then second step using one of these alkyl halides I'm going to use this one first then we have our keto ester structure then we have this alkyl group on alpha carbon We need to perform the same reaction with second alkyl group. So again, I should use base sodium ethoxide. And then second step, I should use this alkyl halide. Then I'm going to have this compound on alpha carbon. I have CH2 phenyl and I also have this alkyl group and then by hydrolysis of this compound again this part leave the structures and we have an acetone and we have these two group on alpha carbon of acetone so we can make the product having carbon carbon double bond in our product it's important and it has a good application in synthesis because we can easily use ozonolysis reaction. By ozonolysis reaction, we can break these double bonds and convert this carbon to the carbonyl group as well. So if I perform ozonolysis reaction, then instead of that C double bond C, I would have C double bond O. So this acetoacetic ester method can be used for synthesis of diketone by this strategy. Here is the next example. We would like to synthesize acetyl cyclohexane. The strategy is still the same thing. We take a look to this and then we find it in our structure. As we can see here on alpha carbon of this acetone, there are two groups. These two groups, they make a ring. So instead of using two alkyl halide, we're supposed to use dihalide. Here we have one, two, three, four, and five carbons. So we need to add five carbon to the alpha position of this acetone. So that five carbon should be in this form. We need to use one and five diboromo pentane. So first step, we should use base. Then we convert this keto ester to anion. Then this anion reacts with 1 and 5 diboromo and expelling one of these bromine out. As a result, on alpha carbon, we have this alkyl with 5 carbon. So I write it in this way 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And on carbon 5, we have again a bromine. By using the second mole of sodium ethoxide. The alpha carbon becomes negative again here and that negative can expelling the second bromine out. As a result, cyclohexane ring forms 
And on same carbon, we have ester and ketone group. By hydrolysis of this ester, the whole ester leaves the structure and the remaining is cyclohexane and acetyl group. So we are able to synthesize this compound by this strategy. Here is the last example. I would like to explain that acetoacetic ester is not the only compound we can use in this reaction. Any beta keto ester can be used in this reaction. So here we have another beta keto ester. It looks like the acetoacetic ester if we don't take a look to this part. So we would like to synthesize this product and I have to take a look to the whole ketone structure. Then I can see that I need to have the alkyl halide with this structure. So I'm going to rewrite this structure here. And instead of attaching to the ring, I'm going to attach it to the bromine. So this is the alkyl halide I need to use in this reaction. So first step, I need to use sodium ethoxide. By using sodium ethoxide, this hydrogen react with base and we have this anion then by reaction between this anion and alkyl halide on second step we have this structure then when we perform hydrolysis this ester group leaves the structure and the remaining is cyclopentenone and this alkyl group and alpha carbon of ketone. So this is the strategy for synthesis of this product. Thank you for watching this video. For watching more videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.